My name is Tim Beach and I'm a student at Utah State University studying watershed sciences and water quality. So now we're going to talk about macroinvertebrates, aquatic macroinvertebrates, and how uh, they're indicators of water quality. So macroinvertebrate uh, is a long word, but if you split it up into two words, macro and invertebrate, it's a little bit easier to understand. So macro means large enough that you can see with your eye, and then invertebrate uh, means as an organism that doesn't have a backbone. So these organisms live in the water, uh, they don't have a backbone, and they're large enough that you can see with your naked eye. So macroinvertebrates are important for a few reasons. Uh, they're a big food source for, for uh, fish and for other animals that live in the water. Um, for, so for, uh, if you're going fishing, you're looking for trout, you're also looking for macroinvertebrates because they're the food source for, for these fish. And they're also good uh, for indicating uh, how much oxygen is in the water, uh, for the pH levels in the water. And so it's really awesome because you can get a sample of macroinvertebrates and it can tell you a whole lot of different things about uh, the water quality and the, wa the status of the water. So these guys have unique life stages. So they start in the water and then they, they have a different life stage or adult stage outside of the water. So these guys, I kind of like to think about them as butterflies. So we know everyone knows that, uh, that they start out as caterpillars and they change into a butterfly. So these guys live in the water and then they change into an adult stage that flies, similar to a butterfly. So many people think of monitoring water quality with probes or collecting water samples, but this way uh, monitoring, monitoring aquatic macroinvertebrates is more of a biological way of monitoring. So when you come out, you're going to collect a sample of these aquatic macroinvertebrates and then you're going to assess um, uh, how large they are, how many they are, how many of them there are, how like how diverse they are, how many how many different species there are, and that could be an indicator of how clean the water is. Uh, some of them are more sensitive than others, so if you see more sensitive ones in aquatic environments, then you can tell that uh, it's a, it's really good water quality. Right, these macroinvertebrates live in different habitats within the river, so there's lots of different. Uh, rocks and uh, sand habitats so throughout the river. So pick a, uh, a habitat on the side, in the middle, maybe in a deeper pool and in a riffle. Just make sure that you're, you're getting a representative sample. Collecting aquatic macroinvertebrates is pretty, a pretty simple process. So you're going to need a few different things. The first thing that you'll need is a net to collect the macroinvertebrates and you can uh, use different kinds of nets. And so this is a simple one that you can create on your own. Uh, we just use two dowel rods and then some window screening uh, tied in between these two. And so this is one that you can make at home. You can take out into the river and collect pretty easily. And so, uh, so you can use this kind of net and then there's also another kind of net that you can use, a more professional net that costs a little bit more money. Um, it has uh, this fine netting on the bottom and then a sturdy, sturdy handle up here. So either way, you, you're, uh, you're going to collect some good macroinvertebrates with these. And so uh, after you collect them in your net, you're going to need to put them in a bin. And so we just have these kind of uh, typical Tupperware that you can put in there. Uh, make sure it's filled up with water. Uh, these guys need to stay in water to stay alive. So fill this up um, and then you can put your macroinvertebrates in there. And then after you have them in your bin, you're going to want to look at them a little more closely. So some tools that can help you out with that. Uh, we have uh, Petri dishes, pipettes, and then uh, just like a magnifying glass, you can put these uh, macroinvertebrates in your petri dish and you can suck up the little ones and uh, put them in there so you can examine it a little bit more. So many aquatic macroinvertebrates live uh, on the rocks and riffles. So it's one of their uh, favorite habitats. So these guys live on uh, the rocks because there's a lot of dissolved oxygen. There's a lot of places that they can hide uh, from predators. And so you'll find a lot of them on, on larger rocks or smaller rocks and sometimes you can even go out into the river and just pick up a rock and you can see them living on living on the rocks there. Okay so we're unwinding our net and then we're going to want to put it on the bottom of the stream to make sure that we capture all of the macroinvertebrates that are, are flowing down into the, into the net. So the next step is uh, kind of a river dance to kick up all the the different macroinvertebrates that are living on the rock. So someone's going to have to come up and step in front of the net and kick up some rocks. So the last step is uh, picking up all the things that you've collected. So all the leaves and macroinvertebrates. So the last thing that we want to do is to empty out 
all of the insects and stuff that we have in our net. And so you're going to want to put it, kind of empty it, and, uh, put it upside down and then uh, filter water through it so it kind of washes everything off the net. So we have a lot of uh, detritus, we have a lot of uh, leaves and moss and stuff in here, but there's a lot of macroinvertebrates in here as well. So um, we've gone through and we've taken our uh, petri dishes and we've collected some of the macroinvertebrates with our pipettes and just kind of scooping them up into our petri dishes. So here's an example of some of the macroinvertebrates that we've caught in the Logan River. So we have some scuds here. These guys are tolerant to pollution. And so you'll see these guys in, uh, in rivers and streams and, and some ponds and lakes that, uh, that have pollution in them. So this macroinvertebrate that we've collected is a mayfly. These guys have three tails. Um, they swim like dolphins, so they're pretty cool to watch. And uh, these guys are a little more uh, sensitive to pollution. You find them in areas uh, with high oxygen and uh, it's a relatively clean river. Okay, the last example we have is a uh, is a caddisfly we've found. Caddisflies build their cases with uh, sometimes silk and, and sometimes uh, or things they find in the river. So caddisflies are also a sensitive species. Uh, they're sensitive to pollution and uh, they also live their, their life cycle in the river uh, or their, uh, their juvenile stage in the river and then transform into the adult. Uh, we could probably tell that this, that the Logan River at this point is probably it's pretty good condition but might have some pollution in it. The last thing that you're going to want to do before you head out is take these macroinvertebrates and put them back into the water body that you found them so they can uh, continue to live on. So some of these macroinvertebrates are a little hard to identify. Uh, so if you go onto our website, we have some tools to help you identify which type of macroinvertebrates you're finding. Um, there's some of these dichotomous keys uh, or different charts that you can look at to see um, uh, which ones have, they go through like which ones have legs, no legs, and they'll help you identify uh, which ones are, are uh, can live in good water quality and some that, that live in not so good water quality. So uh, these are just some tools that you can use to help you, uh, help you in, your, in your quest to, to get some macroinvertebrates.